you say Yes, it's that time again It's Tech Tuesday Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week we're doing another virtual sound check setup video, only this time instead of doing it on an X32, we're going to do it on a GLD80 or GLD112, one of the GLD um, uh, boards <laughs> from Allen and Heath. Uh, this is a really cool board. Uh, it, a lot of our churches, if they don't have an X32, they tend to have one of these. Uh, it's a great board. It has a lot of flexibility to it, especially when it comes to routing, which is great, but it also means that there's a lot more work, a lot more things that could go wrong when you set up this kind of uh, settings here. Um, the GLD kind of came out after or before virtual sound check became really popular. And so it, there's not a like one button you press and this works kind of thing, at least not that I'm aware of. So uh, what I'm gonna show you today is something that I developed for one of our local churches that we work with. Uh, and it seems to be pretty foolproof as far as uh, making sure that everything works when you're in live mode or virtual sound check mode. And, uh, and it's pretty cool. So I'm going to try and make this video really quick because there's a lot of information involved and, um, it, it would be too much to try and cram everything in the video. So I'm going to assume a couple things here. And if I'm wrong, you can leave a comment below and maybe I'll make a follow up video. Uh, one, I'm going to assume that you already have the Dante card hooked up. You've got a computer, you've got recording software. Uh, you just need a quick and easy way to get back and forth. Um, and again, if you're not sure on how all that works, please feel free to um, send me a message and I will maybe do a follow-up video. Um, we are also going to assume that you're using a one-to-one -one patch. So if you're plugged into DSnake1, uh, that is what's going to input one. Input one is then going out to through Dante, channel one, and you're recording channel one, coming back you know, from the recording software channel one through Dante channel one back into channel one. So everything's one all the way through or two all the way through. Uh, whether or not this is the case, uh, I've provided a free resource for you. You can find it in the uh, description of the video that will help you to kind of navigate this because it is a lot more complicated than an X32 where everything's just in groups of eight. You can do everything individually, which is awesome and terrible at the same time. Overall, it's awesome. You just have to take better notes. So again, you can see kick. Uh, it happens to be on layout, you know, bank one, channel one. This doesn't really matter. It just helps you to kind of give a starting point. Um, input one is the DSP. It's coming from D Snake channel one, and it's going out and returning through channel one uh, on the board you know, depending on what mode you're in. And also too, if you have ME ones, <laughs> it's going out channel one, two. I said one a lot. Um, so there you go. So that's, uh, that's going to help you to kind of keep track of everything. So we're going to have three scenes. This is what we're talking about today. Uh, we're going to have our base scene, which is going to have all the proper routing to the computer. Uh, and then we're going to have a VSC or virtual sound check scene. This is so we can hear coming back from the computer and then we're gonna talk about this in a bit. It's called one save to load. This is a transitionary scene that allows us to get in and out of virtual sound check and make sure that all of our settings uh, are correct for virtual sound check or live mode, whatever we're doing. Uh, first off with the base scene, if you have a bunch of scenes already, uh, it's up to you which is gonna be less work for you. You can either go through and make sure everything is routed correctly on all the scenes, or what's a good idea is to delete every scene you have but one, get all the routing correct on that. That's your base scene. So from there on, if someone wants to make a new scene, cool. Well, they have to copy this and start over. So that way they know that the routing is going to work no matter who is on the board. Um, so that's a, that's a good, good thing to do. So that's how we're going to operate today. So looking at our base scene, um, Today's super simple. I just took a, a default scene and I'm just going to show you on one channel. We've got kick on channel one is coming from input one. Nothing's been rearranged on here yet. Uh, and if we look at our processing, pr 
preamp, we can see that it's coming from DSnake channel one from our input sockets. Um, so pretty much everything I just said before, everything's one all the way down. The only thing we haven't done yet is set up for how this is gonna go out to the computer. So we're gonna go to our IO over here, IO port out, uh, and then we are going to tell it on channel one to come from input socket one, the D snake, and apply. Now, if you're not one to one patch, you're gonna need to do this for each channel. Uh, if you are a one-to-one -one patch, which you probably are, then you can do this a little bit faster. You can select the first channel, input socket one, and then end at, in this case, 24. Hit apply. And now everything is going to be going from uh, your 1 through 24 out 1 through 24 to your recording software. Uh, so that's the fastest, easiest way to do it. Now, you might be asking yourself or asking me, Chad, why didn't you use the um, input direct out? Instead, you chose to use input socket. Well, that's a great question, and let me show you why. And if anyone from Alan and Heath is watching this, please address this in the future or make a firmware update. Um, so if you go to input direct out, which would be the better choice because it shows you, oh, for sure the kick drum is coming out channel one. Well, that's great. Uh, however, there are two things that bother me about this. Uh, one, and this isn't a huge deal, but it can be, the direct outs on the uh, GLD series boards are globally set. Uh, and that's, so you can't really change that per instrument. The thing that really bothers me is that you can't set the, um, the, the tap point or whatever you want to call it, the direct out to any earlier than the digital trim. You have to include digital trim. Um, Alan Heath, if you could change this to be directly off of the preamp, I would be very, very happy. Because what this means is that one, a lot of churches don't use digital trim correctly. Uh, but two, if you are using it or you have to use it, so some of the channels you have to, um, that means that one, you're recording at a lower than full signal. And two, when it comes back into your board, it's being attenuated even more if those digital trim settings uh, haven't been changed. And so it's, um, it's really not effective for a virtual sound check. You wanna have the same volume that's hitting your board from the preamp uh, during recording be the same volume that's hitting the board uh, during virtual sound check. So that's why we want to use the uh, IO ports instead. It doesn't look as pretty. I'm sorry, not IO ports, input sockets, one off. <laughs> doesn't look as pretty, um, but it does give you a better result. So in this case, we're just using 1D Snake. We got everything set um, correctly. Uh, so for example, for later, I'm gonna crank the gain on here. This is just a visual thing. I've got the gain cranked. Uh, I've got the fader up and the, actually I'm gonna put the fader down and the mute on. Okay, and we're gonna save this or store it to our base scene. Now, to give you the full picture, I'm gonna delete these two so I can show you from scratch how I made these. Let's take our base scene, we're gonna copy, and we're gonna paste it onto nine and 10. I'll just pick nine and 10 just so there's some room between the channels. So when you add more scenes, they're kind of spread out. So paste, yes, paste, yes. Let's label them VSC and one save to load, loave, loaves and fishes. Okay, so let's start with our virtual sound check scene. So we're gonna go to virtual sound check and what we wanna change is our IO settings. There's two things that we wanna do. First thing is that we wanna basically undo these IO port outs. We don't want audio going back to our computer necessarily because that can create a feedback loop. So we're gonna to go to unassigned and then 
apply to all. So we avoid a feedback loop. And now we're gonna go to our IO port in. So this is the audio coming from uh, the board. And we're gonna assign this to our uh, input channels. So real easy, we're gonna go to input, one through 24. And now instead of coming from the digital snake, is coming from our card and then going to the kick channel. So again, channel one from the computer is going to input one, um, which is the kick. Now, if you notice over here, the gain knob has changed. Uh, it is no longer showing gain, it's showing digital trim. So it's at 12 o'clock. Uh, we can also click on processing and we can see it no longer says uh, input socket one. Now it says IO port uh, in one. So that guarantees that we're getting it from the computer, no longer from our physical device. So that's great. Um, so that is pretty much it for the actual scene. We're going to hit store. And then here's where things are going to get, um, really helpful. We are going to use recall filters. If you're not familiar with recall filters, it means when I recall this scene, what does and does not change. Uh, so we're going to click on those. When you open the board for the first time and go to this, it's going to look like this. This is showing what will be unaffected um, when you recall this scene. And we want all of our mix settings to stay unaffected. We only want those things we just changed to, uh, to change. So we're going to go over here to block all. And then we're going to go to others and we will allow the patch bay and the IO ports. So now that means that those are the only things that will change when we recall this uh, scene. Hit close, and we're done with that for now. We'll go to our one save, two load. We want the same concept, um, but we want th this to have the IO settings of the base scene um, but all the other settings that we just did in virtual sound check. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to recall filter, block all, and then we're only going to allow the patch bay and the IO port close. And that is it. Um, so let's talk about how this works. Um, I'm so let's go to our base scene recall. You see that our gain is at max, mute, fader down. So that's, let's say that that's how we mixed our service and we want to go back and make it better. <laughs> um, so when we do this, there's two steps to this, um, using this correctly. First step is to save or to store. I can't fit store and recall on there. It's too small of a spot. So I called it save. This just verifies that all the um, in and out settings are saved over this in case you've changed anything. Um, so that's the only reason we have to store over it. Now we're gonna go to virtual sound check and we're gonna recall. And again, watch this knob right here. It's gonna go to 12 o'clock. Great, that shows us that we are back in, uh, in our virtual sound check mode. Let's say we are playing around with it and we decided to unmute it and turn the fader up. Sounds great, I love it. Now, when we're all done, we're gonna go back to one save, two load, and our second setting here is it's time for us to load or to recall. Uh, when I do that, you'll see my fader, my mute, all that will stay the same. The only thing that's gonna change is the gain because it's coming off of the physical input now, not the, um, the board, or the computer, excuse me. So we'll hit recall, yes. And you see, that's the only thing that changed, that one setting right there. Now that we've done that, we're pretty much done. We can either save a new scene, or in this case, I'm gonna save over my base scene. Actually, I'm gonna save a new scene here. So we'll just hit store. And now you can see, we started with this. Gain up, mute on, fader down. We ended with gain up, no mute, fader up, because we use a virtual sound check. So the only thing that can bite you on this, well, one of the only things, 
is if you get confused and do these out of order. Um, it's not the end of the world. Uh, so one thing that I would have you do just to be safe is copy and then throw a copy of this at the very bottom. So if you get messed up, uh, paste. One save to load, low add. Just guarantee my filters are right. Yep. We'll do the same thing with our virtual sound check. Copy. Paste. VSC. Filters are correct. Yes. Also make sure that there are no filters at all, so allow all on your live scenes you're using here, and that will work for you just well. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. If your church has a better way to do this, I would love to hear it. Um, I, I spent a lot of time developing this, and uh, it seems to cover every contingency, but if you know of a something that I've just overlooked, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear that. Um, until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.